Hello everyone, welcome back to Kiran's English Show. So in this video, I am going to teach you the next lesson of Unit 5 that is Reading A. And the lesson name of this Reading A is The Storage House. And in that we have two parts, okay, part 1 and part 2. We will go through part 1 in this video. And in the next video, I will uh, teach you part 2, okay. So before getting into this, once look at this theme of the unit that is given, that is social, social issues. What are these social issues? See, social issues can be considered as, you know, caste issues, uh, you know, high class, low class issues, Parada system, widow remarriage, Sati Sahagamuram and all. So once there were many of these social issues, but as the time passed and passed, uh, you know, the atrocities of higher classes have come down. And now people do not have much social issues, but still there are social issues existed in the rural areas, if you trust or not. Okay. Now, we'll see what this whole lesson is going to be about, what this le lesson is. Here we can see the poster of this unit where uh, an old lady is just, uh, you know, sitting here uh, holding that begging bowl. Okay. I will try to rotate that if possible. Yes, I can. So here you can see, <clears throat> you can just understand that India is one of the poorest countries. The reason is that it has some of the taboos, some of the social evils, some of the problems which can never be solved. So like poverty can be also called as one of the social evils uh, because it is again in the case of other people, whether they would help others or not, whether they would, uh, you know, give chance for the others or not to come up in their lives. So based on that, they become uh, poor and all. Now, before getting into the lesson here, we have uh, some of the pre-reading exercise here. Read the following and answer the questions that follow. This is very important one, very important poem that is uh, written by Rabandha Tagore. Where the wall has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls, into that heaven of freedom, my father let my country awake. Now, this is written by Ravindra Tagurji. Okay, he wanted to, uh, you know, speak to the God. This is in a case of speaking to God, where he is asking God, the nature, to let his country lead into the world. Which type of world? The world where they are not broken up into fragments based on the religion, based on the caste, based on the customs, based on the traditions, people have been broken into different fragments. But Ravindra Tagore is asking, please lead my all country people into the world or into a new era where there will be no separation. How are they separated? The people have been separated by narrow domestic walls. Narrow domestic walls in the sense, some of the social issues. Into the town of freedom, my father, like my country awake. And my father, in the sense, is just representing um, the word father here to God or to someone that he is pledging to. Now, why did he say this? Ramana Tagore, he, some of his works, if you observe, they are completely you know, related to the social issues where he wanted to uh, you know, give a note to the people of these people who have been suffering because of these social issues to come out of that uh, bubble, to come out of that kind of social evils and fight for their rights. The same type of character we see even in this lesson. Okay, before getting into that, we have two questions here. What do the above lines talk about? The above lines talk about the social evils on which or because of which the society is divided into parts. What does the expression, the narrow domestic wall means? I already told you, the narrow domestic walls here refers to the social evils that we have. Okay, now oral discourse, speech. Social evils are the hurdles for the development of the country. This is the uh, theme that is given for the speech. This must be a classroom activity by the students. So what are these social issues? So social evils, causes, consequences, and your role in making the world a heaven of freedom. 
he should speak about all this he should speak what are the social ills what are the causes of social ills next what are the consequences of social ills and also what is your role in making the world the heaven of freedom heaven of freedom in the sense the country where uh, you know it is not broken into different different separations this is yours this is your place this is my place no he wanted a world which completely has freedom okay now let's read the story so here we have a story i will just give you brief outline okay as usually so storied one storied house one storied house two these are divided into two parts okay in this video we will be only going through the explanation of the storied house one so here there is an age old man uh, who comes back to his village and with the little savings that he has he wanted to build a house this story setting was in the olden days not today okay now when he wanted to build a house that to a storied house just like one floor kind of house like floor house there were some other people just like the elders of the village who didn't want him to build any house which is a storied house he said you just build a house that is normal regular one which has a uh, two three four five rooms why do you want to build a storied house because there was only one storied house in the entire village and that storied house, be house because belongs to the elder of that um village and he doesn't want this old man to build a house just like his because this old man doesn't belong to their caste now you should know that we are heading towards some social level caste based story this is where the old man is from so called lower caste and where the other man is from so called higher caste so that so called higher caste person doesn't want this old man to build a house just like his house and finally what happens is so terrible that we will see at the end of story 2 but let us first see how this story is framed in the beginning and all okay let us get into this there was something really wrong with the straight transport bus it had come up the winding road in the mountain as if with a lifetime effort the road was now downhill and at the bus moved as slowly as a sick man walking with the help of other it reached the plain where the dispensary building was situated and stood still like an obstinate bull now the destination was hardly a mile or two away but the driver was sore and the conductor had no option but to be silent when they realized that the bus wouldn't move any faster a couple of passengers exclaimed god damn it for a bloody nuisance so this is the setting where a bus is coming to the village a uh, you know government bus that is state transport bus so this bus was not at all going faster i uh, see there was a downside hill but still you know the driver was so reluctant to drive it very fast he was going just like a sick man he was driving the bus just like a sick man and you know all of a sudden it stops it at one place and it cannot move on all and there was another two more a mile or two away for this old man to reach okay this old man is in the bus now okay now the conductor also cannot do anything because he is not the one who is responsible for the driving so everybody is so irritated and uh, they i know shouted like god damn it what a bloody nuisance this is because um, hardly one or two miles are there and this fellow is not going fast fast enough okay let us see what happens next the conductor asked the passengers to get down and put their strength together to push the bus having gained this initial momentum the bus started passengers clambered up jostling one another the conductor rang the bell and the bus gradually took on speed it entered the village reluctantly like a trant child being dragged to school as it wound its way through the curves on the outskirts it groaned and croaked like a hen about to lay eggs and stopped with a bang in front of uh, bhujaba patil's residence so here when this bus suddenly stopped in front of a building somewhere far uh, from this village 
the conductor asked the passengers to get down and just uh, push it okay so all of them they uh, got down and pushed the bus and when it was moved a little bit immediately it started more started to get that momentum that speed and immediately everybody uh, got inside making jokes and all and slowly and slowly okay just like a reluctant child who is dragged to school how are the children going to school they don't want to go they want to be at home so just like them even this bus also is very reluctant to enter the village and finally after very lot of struggle and after going very slowly finally it stopped with a bang bang in the sense there was a break applied in uh, where in front of bojaba patil's residence so as it halted halted in the sense stopped okay as it stopped it gave a big lurch sending the passengers helter skelter churn like water in a pitcher when the carrier stumbles so when the bus stopped everybody started to move front and back because the you know brake was applied in that way so helter skelter in the sense here and there and it is just like water in the pitcher pitcher in the sense pot okay so when you move the pot which is full of water okay you can just imagine how the water moves so the passengers started to move like that when the brake was applied now all the passengers got down the coolie put his hand on a huge wooden box and shouted whose box is this bayaji who was brushing away the dust from his body answered oh it's mine please lower it down see here all the passengers got down from the bus and there was a coolie uh, these are the people who are uh, usually at the bus stops and railway station especially who carry the luggage of the passengers okay now he asked uh, okay whose box is this because he wanted to carry that box okay now bayaji is the character that we are going to focus on this bayaji is the old man which i told you before okay so he he was dusting away the dust uh, from his body that means you can understand the village setting okay in the villages if you go in the bus remember by the time you reach your house if it is a muddy road you will just like you will be painted with mud all that dust on your face and clothes so just like as usual bayaji is also experiencing that and he was dusting away all that dust from his body and he immediately answered oh this that box is mine okay don't touch it kind of the coolie heaved and grunted as he lowered the box which bayaji caught with ease okay see here um the first the coolie wanted to carry that uh, box the wooden box big one but here bayaji said no no that is mine keep it okay lower it keep it down i, I don't want you to carry because i don't have money to give you i cannot spend that much money he is just like a person who can do the things on his own okay so now he doesn't want that man to carry uh, this um the box wooden box and immediately bayaji came and he caught that box very easily now bayaji had packed his entire household goods in this box there was no longer any reason to hang around in bombay he had worked honestly for the past 35 years in the dockyard and had retired from service 2 months before not that he had held an important position he had merely got an extension for 2 years but during that period he had become a supervisor otherwise his entire life had been spent lifting heavy loads he had worked very hard whenever he could day and night so here we can see that this man is actually coming from bayaji is actually coming from bombay that's why he packed all the items in his box and remember he honestly worked for nearly 35 years in that dockyard okay dockyard in the sense where the ships come and uh, uh, come uh, you know halt there and all now he retired from his service two months before and he did not hold any important positions but since he got two years extension during that period he also worked as supervisor and during the supervision duties and all they need not to lift heavy loads otherwise if he didn't have that type of supervision work then he should have been uh, you know a kind of person who worked uh, in his entire life lifting the loads and all so his nature is such that he had worked every night and day whenever he could so he did not take any rest since he went to bombay 
to work and earn money. He used to work day, night, and whenever he could. Okay. So, so here we can see uh, how hard working is this man. Okay. Now, Bayaji had cross 60. Cross 60 in a sense is age is 60 plus, but was in sound health. Sound health means good health. Okay. He had a sturdy frame right from birth and hard work had given a well-formed shape to his strong body. He paid 15 paisa to the coolie, put the box in which he had thrown pots and pans and sundry other things on his own head and began to walk in the direction of his house. Now, after some discussion, he also had given some amount to Kuli, where Kuli had, uh, uh, you know, carried that luggage to one uh, certain place. And after that, he started to lift that uh, box onto his own head and started carrying it. And he was going towards his house, okay, towards his house, that is, direction. Now, remember, though he is 60 plus years old, he is very strong enough to carry that, uh, you know, box. And uh, he has packed everything in that box, all the pots and pans, sundry, on the pots and pans and sundry in the sense, everything, all the things that he uh, actually had taken there. So he has packed everything and come back now. Now, as he reached Kadam's house, he saw uh, Baujaba coming towards him. Baujaba was a known rascal of the village. Okay, so character of Baujaba is, was a rascal in the village. Bayaji balanced the burden on his head, straightened his neck. He said, greetings to you, sir. How are things with you? See, whenever you enter the villages, in the cities, this won't happen, okay? But in the villages, you will come across this. See, from the time you get down from the bus until the time you reach your house, many people will greet you. Many people are, hey, put a chara, enter, I love the churn, chowtu now, I am chowtu now, job this now, that this. I said, no. You all know this, right? I think most of you have experienced. Same case happened with this old man. So there was somebody who was passing in front of him, and instead of that fellow could ask him, actually, the old man started to ask, What did he uh, what did he say? Greetings to you, sir. And he asked, How are the things with you? That means how everything is going on. Is everything fine? Kind of sentence. Now, whom did he ask? He asked Bahuja. Uh, Bahujaba. Okay. Now, Bayaji was a Mahar. Remember this, students. This is the setting in Maharashtra where the low caste, the so called low caste, I, I won't say low caste because that is so called low caste. There, they are called as Mahars. Mahar is a caste of a person which is the so-called low caste. Where they are not allowed to speak to the people that easily. They are just like laborers in the eyes of the so-called high caste people. Okay. Now, Bayaji was a Mahar by caste. Okay. And according to... Uh, Age old custom, you should have greeted Bhoja with my humble salutations to you, sir, who are my father and mother. This is, you know, a kind of sentence which is a revolutionary, I call it. Remember, okay, like, you know, if you are 10th, class, 10th grade students, you can just understand it as it is. But remember, if you are 10th DS aspirant, you should look at it in another way. What is that another way? See, whenever a high class person or so called high class person faces with the so called low caste person, if at all low caste person has to speak to him, he should speak in such a way that this low caste person must degrade himself. He cannot be so friendly with the so called high caste people. Here, if you can see, he is actually expected to greet in this way. What is that way? My humble salutations to you, sir, who are my father and mother. See, such awkward thing it is, right? So, the low caste people were expected to greet in this way. Okay? So, this is how, uh, you know, the days were in the olden days. But now things are changing. Uh, of course, Chris. Okay? Now, let us look at the next one. So, when Bayaji merely said greetings, Bhauja became furious and said, 
Do you think you can become a Brahmin merely by saying greetings? Can you forget your position simply because you have turned a Buddhist? Now, Bayaji is a Mahar by caste and a Buddhist by religion. Whereas, this fellow, Bhaujaba is, uh, you know, a Brahmin. We can just sense that he is a Hindu. Okay? So, here we can uh, understand that when uh, Bayaji has greeted this man, uh, my humble salutations to you, sir, in a kind of, a kind of friendly way, he was not expected to, uh, you know, greet these high caste people in such a way. So that's why this fellow has got angry. And uh, immediately what did he say? Why are you being so friendly with me? Do you forget your caste? Do you treat Brahmins in such a way? Do you, become, do you think that you have become a Brahmin? That means Brahmins completely controlled the entire caste system. They call themselves as the so-called high caste people. And that is why these low caste people are not allowed to be greeted or to greet these people in that way. That is why there was a, a dialogue from that man. And here also he said, you know, can you use that word greetings? How can you use? You are a Mahar. You are a low caste person. How can you use that? And do you forget your position because you have become a Buddhist? That means when you are in, uh, in Hindu religion, you knew your position and you used to obey us. Now you, uh, you know, uh, changed or you have changed your religion into Buddhism. So do you forget that you, your caste is same, though you changed your religion into Buddhism? So this was the question from this, uh, you know, the rascal, which we call, that is a Brahmin who is in this, you know, lesson. Now, Bayaji was non-pulsed, non-pulsed in the sense he, he, he didn't have anything to speak. He was just quiet. For a moment, he was tempted to knock him down with his box, but realized that he couldn't afford to do so. Besides, now he had come back to his village for good. He has to spend the rest of his days on this soil and would be interred in the same soil. He would not be able to return to Pune or Bombay hereafter. It was not a good policy to incur the hostility of anyone in the village, least so of the Patil, the village headman. Now, after listening to this dialogue from this man, that is uh, Bhujaba, um, Bayaji actually wanted to uh, knock him down with his box, but he couldn't do so because he was an old man. And another thing is, he didn't just come there for a vacation to the village. He just came back to the village to again spend his uh, complete retirement life there. So he doesn't want any problems with other people. So we didn't want to uh, make the situation worse. So he just kept quiet. He cannot even go back to Pune or Bombay. So he was very quiet. And he knew that he cannot you know, face anyone um, in the village and he cannot also even uh, face this man, Mr. Patil, who is the village headman. Okay, village headman are the common ones in the village who do all these judgments and all. So he said in a meek tone, meek tone in the sense kind of so humble tone, when you degrade yourself and speak that is called as meek tone, okay. Sir, why spring this on me even before I set food, I set food on the soil of my forefathers. I have to stay here till the end of my life. Now this is the sentence from this old man. He said, sir, okay, instead of, before that you can say he did not mention sir. This is the word which is very, you know, cruel word, I can call it. Because the so-called high caste people, you know, they put themselves in such case, such figures that they were the masters of society and everybody should respect them like sir, dad, this. Then there was dialogue from this high caste Brahmin person uh, that did you forget who your mother and father is or did you become any other person uh, or did you become Brahmin by changing your religion or not? Now he started to, this old man started to uh, become a little bit humble because he had to stay there for very long in the village, right? So he had to die there itself. Now, uh, he said, Sir, why do you want to speak such type of words? Just now I stepped, I just set my foot on the ground of my uh, village. Why do you want to say these things to me? Please leave me kind of. Okay, he was begging actually. 
So this was the result when he just created how is everything. Okay. So now, why aren't you going back to your job? Asked Mojaba. No, sir. My service is over. I've turned 60. With this, Bayaji lifted the load from his head a little to place it in position. Now, um, you know, when this man said, no, sir, why do you want to mess with me? Uh, right. I have to stay here till my death. So immediately that man asked, uh, why aren't you going back to Pune or Bombay? Uh, because you have things to do and all. I have to go and work. This man, old man said, no, no, I'm not going back because my service is over. Now I'm 60, 60 plus. So while he was saying this, he just adjusted his luggage and all. Now, then you have collected your fun amount. Uh, Bhojaba was taking his measure. Measure in the sense he was taking a step ahead. What did he say? Did you collect all the amount that you had to get there? And this man said, yes, sir. Okay. Abayaji replied with pride. Yes, sir, I have. I have earned a little money. So how much? He asked. Who asked? Bojaba asked. Greedily. Why greedily here? These people are, these so-called high caste people are always greedy. Earn money, earn money. Get money. Okay. That's why this is mentioned. Greedily here. The words which are used in this lesson are very important, my dear students. Okay. Not much. What can a daily worker earn? Bayaji answered. So when that opposite person, the so-called rascal Brahmin who is there in this uh, character, which is shown as rascal character here, uh, he was trying to, you know, take his measures and trying to be greedy. So at that time, this old man said, no, no, sir, I'm just a regular or daily coolie. So what can I earn? Not very much. Bayaji answered, why won't you mention the figure, man? Bojaba persisted artfully. Okay, so this old man was not mentioning any figure like 1,000, 2,000, 10,000, whatever that is. When he was not mentioning that, this uh, fellow, this Bojaba, he asked, why don't you mention a figure, man? And he just tried to, uh, you know, use that sentence kind of little bit in a heartful, artful way. Now, some two and half thousand rupees, Bayaji gave the correct figure. Okay, so now Bayaji is, you know, since he was not left, um, Bayaji now wanted to just give some figure and a leave from there. So Bayaji just said, uh, I just uh, earned two and a half thousand rupees. Okay, that means 2,500 rupees. Uh, in, this is not the present setting, okay? That's why I told you this was the setting in the olden days. Olden days in the sense, past. Bayaji, you have a heavy load on your head. Go to your house first. We'll talk at leisure later. Bosch was said in mock sympathy. Again, another important uh, group of words here. Mock sympathy. It's not real sympathy. Mock sympathy. Sympathy is being kind. Mock sympathy is in the sense you're not actually kind, but show your kindness acting. So here the man, Bosch he said, okay, Bayaji, you have some load on your head. So let us say you just go to your house first. So whenever there is free time, we will talk. Okay. Now that was all mock sympathy. Yes, yes, Bayaji mumbled and walked into the direction of his house. At the moment, Bayaji was the proud owner of two and a half thousand rupees in cash. So it made no difference whether he was an untouchable or a Buddhist. So Bayaji also, as this man said, do you first go to your house? Bayaji said, okay, fine, I have to go, my, go to my house. And he started to go in the direction of his house. And at that moment, he knew that he was the owner of how much? Two and a half thousand rupees. In olden days, one rupee is, you know, too, too much valuable and 2,500 rupees is very much. And you can see that he had worked for more than 30 years in Pune and Bombay. Now, money is important in those days. Even now, caste, Buddhist, religions, all these are not so important. Okay, but still people made it in such a way that Whoever has this caste, you are important. Whoever is in this religion, you are important. But actually for the poor people, money is important to, uh, you know, complete their daily needs. Now, if only one could swindle out uh, of the untouchable Bayaji, or rather Buddhist, Bayaji, four or five hundred rupees, that was enough. With the thought in his mind, Bojba entered his wada, uh, the big house. Okay, see here. Uh, now this... A setting is now we are about to see 
this bhojabas entrance okay it is called as wada wada is nothing but kind of street okay and he has a very big horse so when he was entering he thought in himself that if only one could swindle out of the untouchable bayaji or rather buddhist bayaji four or five hundred rupees that was enough that means he just wanted to swindle out some of the amount from him okay so he also entered into his big house which is also mentioned uh here okay he entered into his street and in that street there is a big house that belongs to bojba okay now exchanging uh pleasantries with people he met on the way bayaji reached the public building called uh thakya in the untouchable settlement untouchable settlement in the sense in that untouchable area um there was a building which was called as thakya the building was named after buddha vihar by those who had embraced buddhism so it was named because of the people uh, who have actually built it and those who have uh, embraced this buddhism okay the buddhist tradition as bayaji neared buddha vihar the children who were playing with a ball of ball made of rags ball made of rags it is not your tennis ball and court ball it is ball which is made of rags what is ball made of rag rag is all uh, you know the waste like covers papers and all people the poor people poor uh, children used to play cricket and all other games with this type of balls made of rags so all these people were playing when bayaji was moving towards his house finished their game and cried out uh baiju nana is here baiju nana is here okay when somebody has comes from uh you know the cities or other places immediately children's children they feel so happy okay now and stampeded in the direction of baiji's house okay all of them are shouting and shouting and they just jump towards the houses house of baiji baiji's 85 years old mother quickly scrambled to her feet so as soon as um baiji's mother saw him so immediately she just started to get up and uh, uh, you know see her son she had aged much but her old worn frame was still sturdy and her teeth were strong enough to break grams she could thread a needle without help when she heard of bayaji's arrival her heart swelled this is the love of mother okay so bayaji is almost 60 plus years old that you can see and also his mother is still there and she is almost 85 years old 80 plus okay here you can see 80 plus so as soon as, as soon as she heard the shoutings of the children so she understood that her son was coming and she immediately got up uh, she wanted to greet her son and remember uh, she was so strong she was so sturdy sturdy means strong strong and she was also at that time able to even break a gram gram in the sense the pulses so her teeth were that enough and also she could thread a needle that means nowadays people they you know won't be able to put the thread into the needle but at the age of 85 years this uh, old woman the mother of bayaji was able to needle the thread okay so as bayaji came in his wife concealed her joy with the end of her sari and took uh down the box from his head his grandchildren clung to him and began to twist the folds of his dhoti the neighboring children watched the scene in idle curiosity so everybody came running out uh like bayaji's mother bayaji's wife bayaji's sons uh grandsons and granddaughters grandchildren everybody they came and even the neighbors they started watching when this bayaji came so everybody has become so emotional so they all started to speak to him and uh, you know the wife actually took down the box from the head of her husband so bayaji also has some uh, he had some grandchildren okay so come get in into the house children said bayaji his mother walked out with a bent back and told bayaji to wait outside the door so when bayaji said okay come let us go inside the house let us go inside and speak so when he was about to enter the house Uh, the mother actually didn't allow him instead she she went inside the house and she told bayaji to wait outside the old woman came forward poured some water over the place of a piece of bread in her hand moved it around bayaji's face and flung it away as an offering she ran her palms over her cheeks and pressed her finger on her uh, temples 
all eight fingers gave out a cracking sound so this is uh, the custom or this is kind of small practice which is done by all mothers okay let us say you went to some other place a very long place and came back and uh, it is in english called as bad sight or bad eye of anybody if that is there on you something bad would enter the house along with you that's why people give this harati people uh, remove this all this uh, you know the uh, ash guard kind of breaking coconut breaking on the before they could enter so this is also the same custom but since they were poor here you can see that uh, you know she did not bring ash guard and all instead she brought a piece of bread okay we can say call it roti okay a piece of roti and she moved it around her uh, his head and uh, threw it away and also she cracked her fingers like this putting i you know the two hands uh, to the head and cracking the fingers so this is believed to be the kind of uh, you know the bad eyesight removal in telugu we call it as jishti okay now bajaj's family was doing well he had eight children in all six sons and two daughters bajaj totally had eight children six sons and two daughters the daughters had been married off and given birth to children the elder son uh, looked after the fields the next two sons were in government service the other one after them was a school teacher and the sixth one was still studying okay sixth one was still small since they knew that bayaji was coming home for good the elder son in service and two daughters were already come to greet him all of them wondered what their father had got for them from his lifetime earnings so all these people eight children like sons daughters along with the grandsons and granddaughters they were all waiting for him because they knew this uh, bayaji is going to come and they were so eager that uh, you know the, um, the father would bring something for them okay and remember the two daughters have been married off but they came since their father was coming and even this all the sons they are in different different positions so they all took kind of uh, off a kind of leave because they wanted to see their father the next day when bayaji opened the box it revealed only some pots and pans nails and photographs pots and pans nails and photographs which bayaji had taken to uh, pune or bombay when he was working there So look at these. The elder daughter asks, "Nana, Nana is father. How is it that you haven't brought anything for us? When you opened that box, the wooden box, there was nothing inside. Only some pots and pans were there. Only some photographs were there. And looking at them, the elder daughter said, 'Nana, I thought that you brought something for us. Didn't you bring anything for us?' Bayaji was amused that his daughters um, thought in this childish manner. even after they had children of their own so bayaji didn't imagine that their that his daughters would respond in such a way and they are now grown up they also have children and now they are still expecting something from their father he is very poor old guy so what he could have for them right so uh, you know the daughters it is the nature of the daughters usually they expect something from the parents now he ran his eyes over all his children and said look here children If I had brought new clothes for you, they would tear. If I had brought an ornament, it would soon wear out. Out of my earnings, I wish you to have something that last that will last longer. So when the daughters and sons they were expecting something from the father, he said, "No, no, I didn't bring anything for you as gifts. If I bring some clothes, they will some after some time would tear away. And if I bring ornaments, that would after sometimes it would wear out." that's why i didn't bring all of them and i have some plan that will last very longer not just like clothes and jewelry bhayaji paused after these words that means he gave a pause because he doesn't know how his children would react if he says his desire his elder son was godly he said neither we nor our wives want anything the elder son uh, is a farmer okay as we had seen here he was a farmer as we can see the elder son looked after the fields he is a farmer so he said he is little bit godly and he said father you don't worry he didn't expect anything from you just tell us what do you want to do or what do you want to uh, what do you want us to do you tell me look children ours is such a large family even at meal time 
We have to eat by turns or sit crowded, knocking our knees together. I wish to build a house out of my earnings and it has to be a storied house. The usual three portion house won't be adequate for us. Now what the desire of this Bayaji is that he wanted his children with the help of his children and him to build a house which is a storied house. Storied in the sense kind of floors, first floor, second floor kind of. Okay. Now, he, he told them that I have some savings with me, but I don't want to spend that savings on unnecessary things. I want to spend all that money, that is 2,500 rupees, uh, building a house. Because, see, we are, we are a very large family. We have so many people. Um, you can see that six sons were there. And uh, even if we want to eat also, we cannot eat all together at one time. So we need some big house. And that also a storied house. Because, see, this man is... Uh, you know now in the village but before that he had worked in Pune and Bombay so he knew how the people live there how the buildings they were there but coming back to the village again it is just like same old cassette okay you are not that kind you are not this kind how can you have these buildings on top so now this decision is just like a shocking decision first of all uh, because nobody has a storied house in the village except the village head okay now all were happy with this plan all the kids all the children were happy uh, that means the both sons and daughters were happy because father wanted to build a house for them now the plan was finalized and the foundation of the storied house was laid on the auspicious new year day so whenever you start some any new thing or new program you start it on a very good day right the so same thing happened here so they planned very well okay we'll build this house here in this place and all and they also laid that foundation on the very good day that is New Year Day. Now this is part one. Okay. In part two, we will see what happens after starting to build the house. What happened and all. So don't forget to come back and watch the part two that is reading me. So first subscribe the channel and click on the bell icon. When I upload the next video, you will get that. Of course, I will upload it immediately. Next, glossary. God damn it, this is the regular expression, okay? So expression used to show that one is angry or annoyed. Momentum is impetus gained by the moment. This kind of, you know, moving from one place to another place with some push. Clamored is climbed. Jostling is pushing or joking on all. Reluctantly unwilling. Prawn child is a child who stays away from school without a leave or permission. Just like you escape bunk, school bunk kind of. Next, lurch is sudden movement, helter skelter disorder haste like here and there, haved is uttered kind of sigh, okay, kind of disappointment, hmm, kind of okay. Next, grunted is to made, uh, is made a low or a rough sound, just like you know, murmuring in yourself, kind of disagreement or all. Dockyard is place where ships are built and repaired, as I told you before. Next, sturdy is kind of strong and vigorous, one is very strong. Mahar is a Dalit community in Maharashtra. Their main occupations are uh, wall mending, sweeping, or agricultural labor. So this is said to be the low cost. And remember, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar is a Mahar. Okay. Next, sunray is various or several. Non-pulsed is confused, like you know, uh, just without doing anything, just keeping quiet. So kind of so confused that one does not know what to say or what to do. Next. Hostility is enmity or ill will towards the people. Mumbled is to say something indistinctly. Like indistinctly in the sense something that is unclear. Next. Pleasantries are, are jocular or humorous remarks. Next. Scampered is to run quickly. Okay. Fine. So these are the glossary that you have. Some of the important glossary are given here. So here we can see the picture where... Bayaji is standing here, okay, and uh, his mother has come out, his wife, uh, these, he, he might be his son and grandchildren and all. And in the above case, I will show you one important thing, that is this one. If you look at this, he is the, you know, the Brahmin whom about we have spoken. And he is Mr. Bayaji, okay, so here we can see the wood box on his uh, wooden box on his head okay he, he greeted this fellow who is said to be a rascal okay so this is the lesson that we had 
and in the next reading we'll go through reading b that is the storied house part 2 okay students see you all in the next video thank you for watching the video